Hi Locked In Ass, so in this video I'm going to talk you through a couple of examples of how to work with patterns questions. They come up in lots of different ways on the exams and they fall under the functions uh, section of the project maths curriculum. So really what we're trying to do here is look at patterns and see if we can recognise what's happening and then come up with some type of a formula that's going to help us to predict any um, term number in our in our sequence so that's kind of the, where it all ties in together and um, if you've done algebra you'll be able to actually use a bit of algebra in this as well which is quite cool but you don't actually need to have done algebra to understand how it works okay so for this example we're told that Kate has 60 euro in the bank and she plans to save 5 euro each week and we're asked to represent this on a table and then to create some form of a formula that will represent Kate's bank balance after X weeks. So obviously if they had said to us, you know, how much money will Kate have in her bank after five weeks, that might be a little bit easier. But we're going to use that logic to help us answer this question. So the first thing we need to do is come up with some type of a table. And they're not telling you what way to do the table, so it's really up to you how you draw it. But I'm going to do something like this. So I'm going to let this represent the weeks that Kate is saving. I'm going to put in a little thing here and I'm just going to write in pattern and you'll understand why in a second and then I'm going to add in an extra one here which gives me the money. So how much money is actually in the bank account. Okay so the most important thing which I'm sure you've been told in your classes to do with these questions is to remember that when we're talking about what she had in her bank before she started saving, we're going to call that week zero. So basically before the saving begins in week one, we did have money in the bank, which was 60 euro. So um, at week zero, we had 60 euro. Now, if we go on to week one, we now know that our pattern is kind of starting here. So we've saved five euro once so I'm going to multiply it by five and therefore I now have 65 euro or she has 65 euro in her bank account. After week two then I'm still saving five euro a week but this time obviously I've saved it now for two weeks which gives me 10 euro. So therefore if we were adding it on to our original amount which was 60 I now have 70 euro. If I go to week three I'm saving five euro now for three weeks, which gives me 15 euro. So therefore I have 75. The other way of thinking about it obviously is that each week we're just adding five on. But writing it out like that into our little pattern um, will be helpful for the next part of the question. Now, in this question, it doesn't ask us to represent this on a graph, but I'm just gonna do a very, very rough sketch just to show you what's going on. And again, this will help us for the next part. So on our graph, if we say that this side is the amount of money that she has, say 20, 40, 60, 80. And these are the number of weeks. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if we think about it, when she started on week zero, so it's down at the zero on the x-axis, how much money did she have in her bank? She had 60 euro. So her first coordinate is going to be up here. Then after week one, she had saved five euro. So her, uh, we go across, and obviously I really should have this labelled weeks and money. We're going to go across to week one and we're going to go up to 65. Okay, so then after week two, she had saved another five euro, so she was now up at 70. And then after week three, another five euro, so she was up at 75. And week four, she was up at 80. Okay, it's obviously a very, very rough sketch, and I know it's not very accurate, but you get the idea. So if we join those all up together, you get something like this. Obviously, you guys are going to do that with a lovely uh, ruler. Um... So forgive my crooked line on this one, but that should be done with a ruler. So we've got a nice straight line there, and that represents her saving. Now what you should notice from this diagram or this um, graph is that it's a straight line graph. The reason for that is she saves the same amount each time. Now again, as just a little side note here, if you're asked to work out the slope of this graph, we know that the slope is the change in the y divided by the change in the x. 
So if we did that for any section of this graph, we shall get the same slope each time. So if we worked out the change in the x, the change in the y here, we would say, okay, so between week zero and week one, um, the change in the y, so we've changed by five euro between week zero and week one, and the change in the x then is between zero weeks and one week, which is one week, so therefore the slope is positive five. That will always, always link to the fact that she's saving five euro each week, so therefore the slope is going to be five. Okay, part two of my question on that side note. Um, we're asked to create a formula that will represent Kate's bank balance after X weeks. Now, for those of you who have done a lot of graph work, you will actually be able to use the dodgy looking graph on the right hand side to help you. But we're not going to even bother using that um, today. We're just going to use it using our knowledge of patterns. So if we go back to this section of my uh, table here and start thinking about what actually happened. So each time... I added on five euro, my number of weeks was going up. And what they've asked us to do is represent Kate's, Kate's bank balance after X weeks. So what that means is, um, how, after X number of weeks, how much money is in her bank account? So although we don't know how many weeks she's saved for, we do know that this section of my pattern always used to represent the amount of weeks. So instead of multiplying 5 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm actually going to multiply 5 by x number of weeks. Now, we didn't just multiply 5 by the number of weeks and say that's how much money she had in her bank account. We also had a variable that never changed, okay? And that variable was the 60 euro. So the money that she started off with, no matter if it was week 1 or week 1 million, always started with 60 so we can say then that whatever you multiply um, the number of weeks by to, um, by the 5, you just add on 60. And that will give you, we'll call it Y. Y just represents the money in her bank. So therefore we could say, okay, after 4 weeks, how much money is in Kate's bank account? And all you would have to do is let X equals to 4. So therefore 5 times 4 plus 60 is equals to y which is her bank balance that therefore 20 plus 60 gives me 80 and we think that's correct well let's have a look back up here after week three she had 75 euro therefore after week four 80 euro makes perfect sense Okay guys, so this is a um, visual question where you're looking at pictures of blocks and you're being asked first of all to predict how many blocks are in stage 5, which shouldn't cause us too much difficulty I hope. Sometimes on the exams they'll ask you to draw stage 5 or stage 6 so you'll just have to be able to sketch that out as well. And then part B, this is the tricky bit. We need to write a formula to represent how many blocks will be in stage X. So basically, if we continue this on and I want to predict some stage, which I don't actually know right now, is there any way I could do that? So I would say this is a very important question to be able to answer. There's a couple of different ways of answering this question. Again, knowledge of algebra is important, but not necessary to answer this question so I'm going to try and explain it in a kind of a common sense way as opposed to just throwing the x in certain places and, and hopefully it will make sense so for part a we need to predict what um how many blocks are in stage five so the first thing I would suggest doing is just writing down how many um blocks are actually in each stage so I'm actually going to draw a quick little table here so in stage one, we have one block. In stage two, we have three blocks. In stage four, or sorry, three, we have five blocks. In stage four, we have seven blocks. And what you can notice there then from counting those up is that there's two blocks being added on each time, one to each end. So therefore in stage five, there should be nine blocks. So you can see that each time we're just adding on our two blocks. Okay, so hopefully that bit is fair and easy. And like I said, you might have to actually draw that out, but literally it's just adding two blocks onto that. Right, step two or part B is where it gets tricky. And I really would think this is something that you should take your time with 
pause the video, even have a go at it yourself and just really think about where the formula is coming from. Okay, so the first thing that you need to notice is that we're going up in our two times tables kind of because we're adding two each time except it doesn't really look like our two times tables exactly because it's starting with one and then it's going to three, five, seven, nine. Now some of you may have noticed that we're very close to our two times tables but we're just not there just yet. So one thing that I like to do at this point is I like to write out my two times tables and just have a think about what might be going on here. So we've got two, four, oops, six, eight, ten, twelve, etc, etc. And then I'm looking up to the table above of how many blocks I had in my uh, original blocks, how many blocks are in this list. I'm thinking, okay, is there any relationship between my set of numbers there and the numbers that are up above here in this row. So any relationship. And what I'm starting to notice is that each one is just one behind my two times tables. So for instance, if I'm looking at stage one, that's kind of the same as saying two times one, which gives me two, but then I have to minus one away because that gives me my one, which is up here. And for stage two, I do two times two, but actually I don't want four, I want three, so I have to minus one away again and I get my three. If we go to stage three, so my two times tables again, that gives me six, but I don't want six, I want five, so I minus one away and I get five. So what you can notice there is what's actually happening is you're going up in your two times tables but you're minusing one away each time. So once you figure that out, this is very straightforward because they want us to work out a formula that's going to tell me how many blocks we have in stage X. So X is basically just the number that we've been filling in here to this little bracket because stage X is then multiplied by 2 to work out how many blocks have been added on and then we just have to minus away the constant variable which is 1. So therefore the answer is going to be 2 multiplied by x minus 1 and that's going to give me the amount of blocks, let's just call that b. So therefore 2x minus 1 is equals to b and that, that's your answer. Now I always like to do a quick test just to make sure I've done that properly. So let's do it for what we answered in part one, which was for stage five. So I'm gonna, instead of writing down x now, I'm gonna write down five. So two times five minus one, that gives me 10 minus one, which gives me nine. And that's the answer that we gave for part one. So hopefully we've done it right.